In this episode of Saving Sour Castle, we look at the progress in the past several months in securing the exterior of the property. This includes masonry work on the four-story tower, the removal of original fascia, preparations for replacing the roof, reconstruction of the 19th century design gutters, and finally, the replacement of some of Sour Castle's unique exterior features so that her beauty will live on for generations to come. about Sour Castle. This could be good news, Lauren. Would you pay $10 million for a fixer-upper? And that's all we want to see. Bricks on the side have now completely collapsed. It's going to fall to pieces. It needs a lot of work, and a crew has been on property. Going back to old In August 2023, scaffolding was erected so that work could finally begin. As winter approached, the goal was to stabilize and weatherproof the home. Due to damage over the years, including a microburst in 2018, the condition of the four-story tower was one of the new owner's biggest concerns. Focus on restoration of this unique architectural element was a priority. On the west side of the tower, brick was missing all the way to the interior exposing the winding staircase to the elements. Rebuilding the outer brick wythe of the tower began in September. The tower has three wythes or layers of brick. The middle brick wythe had very little mortar and broken pieces were originally used when building it. And the interior mortar was pretty soft. Sandstone was used on the tower and removing it completely would have left the middle wife unsupported. So they cut away the sandstone just to the middle wife and used a consolidant to bind everything together. Getting materials up four stories is not an easy task. The mortar is mixed down below and it's carried to the tower by a lift as needed. Until the cast stone pieces for the windows arrive, the masons are working on installing the outer wythe of brick surrounding it. The mortar inside these walls is really soft. So that is just consolidating that face and getting a, a, a surface that binds the whole thing together rather than reset all the brick. Just adding structure that wasn't there before we tore it. Take the mortar and we spread it on top of the brick. We lay the brick, everything's supposed to be level. The brickwork continued on the exterior of the property. There are four primary chimneys on the home and all of them needed significant repair. In one case, an entire chimney was disassembled down to the roof line and rebuilt. In October 2023, the fascia, eaves, and corbels were removed and found to be in poor condition. Brickwork in these areas was reconstructed. Old fascia pieces that were in decent condition were used to build a mock-up that will help Pishni Restoration reconstruct the new fascia in their workshop. The new fascia will be built in mahogany wood. The gutter system on Sour Castle is supported by outlookers, which are small wood pieces embedded in the masonry. The old outlookers were falling apart and needed rebuilding from scratch. The replacement of the outlookers was performed simultaneously with the masonry work since they are slotted directly into the brick. Patrick Delaney with Pishney Restoration explained how the outlooker system that runs through the brick into the interior supports the gutters on the exterior. And getting this right is extremely important in protecting Sour Castle from future water damage. What we have going, here, going on here is one of the outriggers or outlookers which is part of the integrated guttering system on Sour Castle. Because it's part of the guttering system and it's integrated, 
we can't go back to it, so we need to get it, we need to get it right. Using an old outlooker, Patrick demonstrated how the guttering system will work with the new materials in place. But you can see where it was cut for the, for the trough that, as I told you, will be lined with plywood and then lined with ice and water shield and copper will go over that to form our gutter. In most locations, the ends of the roof rafters were rotted and new lumber was sistered to the existing rafters to add support. The team left as many of the old boards as they could, but they had to add reinforcements to help with stabilization. Structural engineer Steve Huey inspected the roof framing to ensure it could support a new roof because a new roof is quite complex. Caw Roofing and Sheet Metal are the contractors and the roof will be covered in slate shingles from a company out of Vermont. The underlaying roof structure is solid. The team replaced the roof with new sheathing and a waterproof membrane and await the arrival of the new slate shingles. The top of the main roof is flat, covered in copper, and was in very poor condition. Angie Gabler, president of Strata Architecture, explained the issues of the flat section of the roof of the tower and what is being done to ensure its reconstruction is historically accurate. This is the original tin roof that you're seeing underneath here, it's rusted. So the original roof is underneath here and probably was leaking quite a bit. Um, and then you can also see the widow's walk, the cast iron widow's walk that was up here. And that cast iron widow's walk, if you look at it, is made up of small pieces that are bolted together. You don't weld the cast iron, so that's why it's all bolted. This roof we think was probably added probably mid-century, mid-20th century at some point. So this, there was never copper on this house originally. This roof was added later. Because we need to get this bell shape back in here, everything that's going back up here will be copper. The widow's walk is in pieces and they aren't able to be repaired. There's not enough of the pieces left. Sour Castle's exterior construction included beautiful window and door headers. Unfortunately, these elements were constructed using sandstone, as was common 150 years ago. Over time, this detail above the windows has greatly deteriorated. The original sandstone trim and window headers were removed and used as a template for Pishney craftsmen to recreate them with more durable materials. In November, some of these architectural details that were recast, including window headers and the trim, were replaced and they look incredible. Over time, the remaining window headers and trim on the exterior will be replaced. Old houses being restored are always full of surprises, and Sour Castle never ceases to disappoint. Sour Castle had three porches original to the home. This includes the northwest front porch and the east porch. The porch to the northwest partially fell down during rains in 2021. The east porch, the only one left from the 1870s, was carefully dismantled so that restoration on the structure can begin. While removing the east porch columns, which rest against the home, Sour Castle's original brickwork, untouched for 150 years, was exposed for the first time, and its exposure revealed some important details. The tuck pointing a prior owner had done a few decades ago was poorly executed. The mortar is sloppy and wide, as can be seen here on the left as compared to the untouched brickwork on the right. It was discovered that all the bricks were sandblasted, which removed the glazing that covered the bricks originally. This goes against the cleaning methods authorized by the Secretary of the Interior as the standard for historic preservation projects. The dream team of historic preservationists continued to be ready to troubleshoot any further issues that Sour Castle may expose over the coming months and years. And their careful work will continue both outside and inside the home. Next month, we'll take a look at the finishing work on the tower masonry reconstruction and the slate roof installation. Then we'll check out some of the curious discoveries found inside 
of Sour Castle. <laughs>